Hey everybody, welcome to the electric guitar tutorial. If you are coming over from playing acoustic guitar, this is going to be a great set of instructional videos for you on how you can take that information and end up playing electric guitar. This is definitely going to focus on worship songs and worship electric guitar and making sure that what you do fits in really well with ministry moments, slow songs, fast songs, and everything in between. So this video series will have about seven videos helping you find out what are some inverted chords to play, um, when they might sound good or when they might sound better than others. And so buckle up because here we go. This first video is going to focus on power chords. So if you already know about power chords, feel free to skip to the next video. But if you, if this is all brand new to you, then stick around. So let's talk real quickly about some gear. All you need, of course, is an electric guitar. You need an amp. And for this, you would definitely want an overdrive pedal or a distortion pedal or to turn up the gain on your amp. Depends on your specific rig and what you're using. So in this, I will just be using overdrive and overdrive only. I typically also like reverb. I also like delay. Those are great things to use in worship music as well. So in order to understand power chords, the things that you need to know on the guitar are going to be your low two strings. So the low E string and the low A string are going to be the two strings that we really focus on today. And so every fret on your fretboard is a half step. Uh, so low E string, this first uh, fret, that's going to be an F note. So keep in mind that between E and F and B and C, that's just the jump. There is no B sharp, there is no E sharp, that kind of thing. So as you're going up uh, the neck, so here's your low E, so no fretting at all, low E. Here's your F note, F sharp, G. That's an important one to know. It also has a fret marker or a dot right on the side of the neck, um, so you know where you are for your G. G sharp, there's your A, so there's your fifth fret, A. A sharp, B, C, so don't forget that jump, C sharp, D, D sharp, and E. When you're back to that 12th fret, that's the double fret marker on your neck, you are right back to where it is basically at the nut. Uh, just slid up 12 frets. So you've got your E. That's your E string. Then on the A string, open A, your A string. Here's A sharp, here's B, here's C. So another important one to make sure you have memorized is the C note on the third fret of the A string. C sharp, D, D sharp, E, there's F, so don't forget about that jump from E to F, F sharp, G, G sharp, and all the way back to A. So that's the A string. Okay, so if we have these individual notes, how is that helpful? Well, if you see a G chord on your chord sheet for the song that you're playing, you will want to play a G power chord. Even if you see a G minor, you're still going to play a G power chord. So what does that look like? Well, your index finger will go on the third fret of the low E string, and you're going to take your ring finger and place it on the A string, but on the fifth fret. So here's what that will sound like. So the two notes you're playing, one's the G, and then the other happens to be a D. So in music theory or in the building of the chord, that's the one, the root, as well as the fifth tone in that chord, the D. And so put together, it makes this G chord, roughly. But it's neither major nor minor. So that's where the third would come in, in a G uh, chord, whether it makes it uh, major or minor. So there's no third, it's just the one and the five. So a lot of people play their power chords with just those two fingers. I like to add in my pinky finger, and I would place that on the next string, the D string, also on the fifth fret. So those two notes, my index finger, and my pinky finger, they're both playing a G note. 
So it's only that ring finger in between that's playing that D. And so all three of those together. Still a G, still a G. And so I like it, it sounds a little fatter or a little thicker to play with three fingers instead of just the two. And so I'll also note that I am uh, deadening the other strings. Um, so the only three strings that I wanna be playing are those low three, the E, the A, and the D string. So with my index finger, I'm kind of laying it to just kind of be flattened and it's just touching, just barely touching those top three strings so that they don't make any sound. That way I can strum all the way through and I don't have to worry about accidentally making some sounds that I don't intend. So if you start playing something rhythmically, that sounds uh, really nice and full and pretty good. Um, you can also change up how you're playing rhythmically if you kind of use your palm to help mute some, um, some of that ringing out. So instead of that, just use your palm near the bridge or on the bridge even uh, to just mute the strings shortly after, shortly after strumming. So that can give a nice chunky feel um, to a buildup or something in a song. So those notes on the strings that you definitely need to learn, okay, wherever you put your index finger, that's the root note. That's going to go with the chord on your chord sheet that you're playing. So let's say you were intending to play a G, C, D, E minor chord progression in a song. Well, you would start with your G power chord, and then you would jump to your C power chord, which is now your index finger on the A string, third fret, and your two fingers on the fifth fret, this time of the uh, G and D strings. So there's your C. To do a D, then, slide your whole shape up two frets. So now you're on the fifth fret with your index finger, because that's your D note, and your other two fingers on the seventh fret of the G and the D strings. So there's your D. And to do an E minor, we just need to play an E power chord. So two more frets up the neck. Index finger is on the seventh fret. Other two fingers on the ninth fret. And so you can work on playing those in progression. And so <clears throat> as far as rhythm goes, it kind of depends on the song. You might end up doing a lot of downstrokes. Um, you might end up doing uh, eighth notes or 16th notes, depending on the song and how you're maybe building something. But these types of power chords are definitely reserved for huge big parts of the song. Of course you wouldn't want to be playing them uh, during a quiet part or you know during a verse of uh, of Holy Spirit or something like that. Um, but we'll talk about that as we go on a little further in the in the lessons. So your goal between now and next time is to start working on memorizing those strings, memorizing those notes, maybe even look up some guitar chords of your favorite songs. Maybe even look up some guitar songs guitar chords for your favorite songs, and work on practicing those chord progressions. Um, work on some funny keys like B flat, for example. Try those out, and I will see you in the next one.